Hey there guys, so today I'm going to be comparing the two different models of the B-Link SER5 that I was able to get my hands on. So we have right here the model with the Ryzen 5 5600H, and of course we are going to be comparing it to the model that comes with the Ryzen 5 5560U. Now in terms of physical differences, there are only some minor ones, just in general the build quality of the 5600H model is slightly better, but it's nothing that will really make any major difference one of the key differences though is that it does have an extra usb 3.0 port on the back it's still the same number of overall ports with two in the front two in the back but one of the ones in the back is a 3.0 instead of both of them being 2.0 that's about the most distinct difference at least in terms of the exterior so the ryzen 5 5560 u is a lower tdp model with this specific model actually letting you at least on windows choose between a a 15 watt TDP and a 25 watt TDP depending on which power plan you're using. For this comparison we will be running it at its higher 25 watt TDP setting just so that we can maximize the level of performance that we get out of this. And the model with the 5600H actually has a TDP of 35 watts that you cannot adjust and this is actually lower than the stock 45 watts of the chip itself. Of course when we look at temperatures you'll realize that the chassis itself is just the big limiting factor here but if we actually jump in to take a look at performance the first thing we're going to look at here is geekbench 5 running on both of them the scores that we ended up getting with the ryzen 5 5560u is of course a single core score of 1317 with a multi-core score of 5821 while on the ryzen 5 5600h we end up with a single core score of 1422 and a multi of 6218 there are of course a mix of things going Going on here that show the performance difference for one the ipc difference due to the cache size difference between the two apus since they are both zen 3 based but of course the overall structure of each cpu is different but the biggest culprits here really are just those tdp differences and the slightly higher boost clocks on the 5900h there's certainly not a substantial difference between the two but there is a difference there both cpus will do perfectly fine in most day-to-day tasks though so you don't need to worry about it too much there are a lot of mini pcs out there that are rocking intel pentium or celeron level cpus that while they do have four cores a lot of the time they're not exactly the fastest and the overall structure of the cpu itself isn't exactly built around high performance a lot of the times they have very very small amounts of cash their overall clock speeds are not going to be that high and they're very thermal limited by just really low tdp levels while here we do have two six core cpus both of them with hyper threading or rather smt and both are on an architecture that is very recent and it wasn't a chip designed to just be low performance both of these are strongly mil middle road cpus so if you're just looking for cpu performance both of them are going to have more than enough for most tasks out there but the real differences start to become apparent when we do game comparisons here we're looking at rainbow six siege running with the built-in benchmark this is with the lowest in-game graphics settings with fsr set to performance mode but we do have the render resolution set to 100 percent so fsr is the only upscaling happening in here and as you can see there is a pretty noticeable difference between both of the systems here you will see that the ryzen 5 5560u is able to give a consistently above 60 fps gaming experience but our averages are more in the mid 80s meanwhile we jump over to the fix d 600h and and now our averages are in the 120 fps region and our one percent lows are also seeing a nice bump going from a 68 fps range up to 101 a pretty impressive first result both giving playable frame rates but a noticeable difference between the two now looking at a bit of an older triple a title we have shadow of mordor running here with the lowest in-game graphics settings but at the full 1080p resolution you can see with the 5560 you we are getting a decent fps with a one percent low that is going to be within the 30 fps range and our fps average being in the 40s but there is a substantial gain to be had with the 5600 h 
Now, of course, not all titles are going to run really well on these systems. A lot of the times you are going to get closer to a 30 FPS gaming experience than a 60 in a lot of these titles. As you can see here with Arkham Knight running with the lowest in-game graphics settings at the full 1080p resolution, you can see that the 5560U is struggling to even get close to a 30 FPS gaming experience. While at least the 5600H is comfortably at a around 30 FPS gaming experience. So in this situation here, you can actually see that there is a difference of playability here where the 5560U is just at a range where it can pretty much be a unplayable experience for a lot of people. Meanwhile, the 5600H actually goes past that threshold and you can actually comfortably game. It's not ideal, but a lot of people will be more than happy with getting around a 30 FPS average, especially if our 1% lows never really drop below that. But I feel like 900P is the real star here because you can see that it does boost both of them in to a far more playable territory but with the 5600h actually getting a bump high enough that it gets very close to being around a 60 fps gaming experience and there is a noticeable difference between the two because of the pretty major gap also with the one percent lows in general the 5600h is showing some noticeable gains over the 5560u and it really gets to the territory where you start to ask yourself if the price difference between the two of them is worth it and a lot of these titles it really does seem like it is and especially when we're running games at 900p it really starts to flex its muscle there the 5600h a lot of the times really widens its gap here and boosts the level of performance that you get into a range that a lot i think a lot of people would be very very happy to run at instead of just barely being at the edge of a 30 fps gaming experience being closer to a 45 fps gaming experience is actually going to feel noticeably better and especially if you're just willing to not lock things down to a just 30 fps or 40 fps cap you're going to have absolute great consistency there and you're not going to get that with the 5560u in a lot of these titles as you can see here with borderlands 3 with a lot of titles you are going to actually have to think about potentially dropping the resolution down especially if the game has a built-in slider dropping it down from a 100 percent range down to something like 80 to sometimes even down to 60 can really boost the overall performance though of course you are sacrificing visual quality there but as you can see here with assassin's creed origins the difference between the two is pretty substantial here and with at least the 5600h you will be able to play this at around a 30 fps gaming experience while the 5560u really struggles here to the point where you're definitely going to have to start dropping the resolution down i would recommend doing that for both systems but the 5600h is at least at an fps range now where i think a lot of people would find this to be pretty playable while the 5560u really just does not keep up like that and you can see this trend continue on in assassin's creed odyssey so what we're really seeing here is the gpu difference really becoming very apparent because we are missing one gpu core on the 5560u and the maximum clock speed does cap out at 1600 instead of 1800 so overall this does contribute a lot to the difference here tdp differences also would somewhat account here but you'll notice that the system with the 5560u is is not capping out at the full 25 watt TDP. The reason being is that the GPU is already at its max load and it doesn't really need more CPU power here. So having a higher TDP actually would not really help too much in this situation. And we'll drop the render resolution here down to 50%. So you can see what the uplift will end up being here. As you can see, the system with the 5600H is showing a really nice improvement and it is getting you to a far closer to 60 FPS gaming experience in comparison to the 5560U. Really, this is a major drop in resolution though, so you would have to be very desperate to play the game to really try to struggle through this. In general though, you will see better performance out of the 5600H, but you will notice that the temperature temperatures that it's reaching are pretty high because of that increased TDP and in general the system does get pretty loud in comparison and moving on into Far Cry 5 you can see again the pretty major gap between the two systems here with the 5600H getting a at least close to 30 FPS gaming experience though it's still not majorly consistent but the 5560U is really struggling here barely able to get anywhere near a 20 FPS gaming experience 
neither of these are amazing, but there is a world of difference in terms of the playability here. And again, that GPU difference is really, really substantial here. And it's why in a lot of situations, the 5560U is actually a downgrade over the 5500U. And this isn't to say that the 5560U is just worthless in comparison. There are some merits to the system itself because of the lower TDP and the fact that you can actually go down all the way to 15 watts. There are some benefits for it, but it really just comes down to the fact on whether or not you want to use this as more of a day-to-day -day machine versus a gaming machine. If you want a gaming machine, the version with the 5600H is pretty much the way to go and the price difference is worth it because the performance difference is going to be pretty noticeable. But the 5560U does have have a purpose. If I was looking to get a system for my parents or for a living room or just as a secondary system so that you don't have to rely on having to use a streaming box that has Android or is an Apple TV or just has any kind of operating system that is locked down and is going to force you to look at ads on YouTube and things like that, the 5560U version is pretty much the most ideal system to just use in that kind of situation because at 15 watts, it's not going to be used up any power really those six cores are never going to get bogged down by pretty much anything and you're overall getting a really really nice package here for not that much more money in comparison to a lot of mini pcs that only come with pentiums and celeron as you can see here by horizon zero dawn's built-in benchmark there is a world of difference between the two when it comes to gaming performance and again if you really want that gaming performance you want the 5600h the cut downs that AMD did to the 5560U in terms of the GPU were so detrimental to the performance that it's hard to really recommend it if you're looking for a gaming experience. Certainly if you are in a situation where thermals are going to be a major problem, you plan on putting this system in a less than ideally ventilated place, 15 watts running is going to be significantly better than something that's pumping out 35 watts. Now these are not the exact measurements of wattage at the wall at the wall we're going to be using obviously more power and if i could find my watt man i will actually let you know what these end up using in terms of power wall gaming but as of right now i can't locate that thing but you can see that horizon zero dawn here is at least on one system getting a noticeably better experience getting a 42 fps average with one percent lows that are above the mid 30s going to be significantly better than a 33 fps average but with one percent lows dropping into the low 20s it's just a completely different universe in terms of the overall gaming experience but the system does get pretty loud at this point because of those temperatures of course a title like far cry 6 being able to run on both of these systems is pretty impressive of course fsr doing a lot of the heavy lifting here and there is less of a noticeable performance gap between the two here which was actually pretty surprising in general both were not seeing as wide of a gap as we've been used to at this point both are well within a playable range here though again fsr is doing a lot of the heavy lifting and at the performance preset visually speaking it does hurt things a lot but we are talking about a newer AAA title so this is impressive all around now deus ex mankind divided is a heavy heavy game to try to run with the built-in benchmark running at the lowest in-game graphics settings at the full 1080p resolution both systems are struggling to get any semblance of a decent fps here now the 5600u is winning here by a small margin and it's not enough to really push this to be a playable experience it's really when you drop down to 900p that things start to improve though not enough on the 5560u to really really get this to a playable experience while the 5600h performs decently enough and we're pretty much at the edge of what would be considered a playable experience both would probably benefit to drop things down to 720p but if you were stubborn enough you could get away with it on the 5600h and that's not really something you can say about the 5560u unless you want some regular drops into the lower 20s 
Now, if we take a look at the built-in benchmark for Mafia 2 Definitive Edition, you can see here a pretty wide gap in terms of the performance. Now, this is running at the full 1080p resolution, and you'll see that the 5560U is not even really using that much wattage. Again, it comes down to the fact that because of the lower core count and the lower clock speeds of the iGPU, it just needs less power to really get to 100%. So because of that, it pretty much uses the power that it needs to get to its full clock speed and utilization and the rest is just reserved for the cpu and this game does not need that much cpu so in general we end up with a very very small amount of power being used here of course we're not getting a fantastic result there is a huge difference between these two systems in this particular game in this setting but it all just comes down to the fact that there is a pretty noticeable difference in terms of the gpu power between the two and if we drop things down to nine 900p you can see that both see noticeable improvements though the 5600h ends up getting to a territory that is a extremely nice gaming experience meanwhile the 5560u still struggles in the one percent low area and the averages aren't getting anywhere near 60 really pretty much failing to even get into the 40 fps range for the averages in terms of the 5560u meanwhile the 5600h ends up having a really nice overall experience here that is going to be far more consistent and far more enjoyable and we can round this comparison up by taking a look at the built-in benchmark of bioshock infinite an older triple a title but one of the types of games that i think pairs really well with a system like this and we are running this with the medium graphics preset at the full 1080p resolution and overall the level of performance that we get out of both systems is really nice and both are going to be a great experience but the 56 600 h is just showing its lead once again and overall really shows that if you want a gaming experience you want the best possible gaming experience that you can out of the b-link ser5 series go with the 5600 h there is a noticeable improvement in terms of overall gaming experience but if you're looking for a system that you can just use day to day then the 5560u is really impressive so really the thing that impressed me the most was just how well the 50 600 h actually performs in games but also just how quiet the model with the 5560 u ended up being especially if you just went with the stock 15 watt tdp and didn't go with the high performance power plan that sets it to 25 watts at 15 watts it is whisper quiet you never hear the fan and it ends up being such a joy to have on your desk in comparison to the 5600 h which anytime it really ended up boosting Thing, which was anytime I did pretty much anything, I could hear the fan ramp up between the two. So there is some benefit to the lower TDP, but if all you care about is gaming, go with the 5560U. If you need a PC that is just going to be a day-to-day -day use thing and the gaming performance doesn't really matter at all, the 5560U is going to last you a really, really long time. There's merits for both, but if I had to pick a favorite, it is for sure the 5600H model. Links to both of them down below.